All right, let's say that we want to use our calculator to help us solve a trig equation. Um, and the equation is 3 sine of 2x minus 1 equals 4 cosine of 3x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is uh, define each side of that thing to be a function. So f of x and then uh, colon equals, which is control and then the template. So 3 sine of 2x minus 1 and then g of x and then colon equals 4 cosine of 3x plus 1. Um, and so what I'll do now is I want to insert a graphing page and I want to graph f of x. So I'm going to press var and you can see all the variables that are defined f of x and then press tab, press var and g of x. So I get that. Uh, that's an awful lot of intersections. So what I'm going to do is change the window um, and kind of actually just change the problem and make it on a closed interval. So I'm going to go from 0 to um, uh, pi and then 2 pi. I'm going to go to I'm going to go to just 2 pi. Um, OK, so I have this interval. And what I want to do is I want to find the intersection points. So I'm going to do that by using uh, something from the geometry tools, actually. So it's menu, geometry, and then points and lines, and then intersection points. And click on the first graph you want. Click on the second graph. You get a ton of answers. And then what you want to do is make sure that you escape from here. So I escape. Um, and then once you escape, you can kind of drag these around. So we got a lot of answers. One, two. Uh, you have to check and make sure it finds all of them because it doesn't always do that. I don't really know what the uh, logic is behind when it does and doesn't, but sometimes it doesn't. So I got four answers that way. Um, they're kind of all over the place, but that's how you can do it. So it's really the x-coordinates that you're interested in because um, they're the independent variable and you're usually solving for the independent variable. Um, I'm going to try to do this one other way just so you can see. So what I'm going to do is insert another graph page. And um, so I still have f of x and g of x if I want to graph those again. But what I really want to graph is f of x minus g of x. OK. And then what I'll do is I'm going to change my window again from 0 to 2 pi. Get that. Um, and now I will try to find these. Uh, I'll use the zeros this time. If you want to use the um, intersection points again, what you should really do first is graph y equals 0 or f of x equals 0. Um, just so that it can find the coordinates for you. But I'll do this, analyze graph, find a zero. There's one of my zeros. And then I just have to keep repeating that. Um, so it's a little annoying, but it works. Another one. And also the more you do it, the better you get at doing it. So it's not really the worst thing in the world. And then negative six, one. And there we go. But I gotta drag them around a little bit so I can see them. So the advantage this method has is that it found the same x-coordinates. Um, so like 0 0.48, 1.45, um, and if you look back here, 0 0.48, 1.45, 0.79, uh, 3.79, and 2.93. And you can see we found the same x-coordinates. The advantage this has is that we were guaranteed that the y-coordinate we were looking for was going to be on the x-axis. So you don't have to go hunting around um, kind of in the plane to find these intersection points because like in this case, instead of finding the intersection points, we're finding the zeros of f of x minus g of x, and those have to have been on the x-axis because that's where zeros are. Um, so anyway, that's a, another option, and uh, you might prefer this option, actually. But uh, I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.